What notifications do you get? Yesterday, I asked my Amazon Echo device about the weather. And after the update, it proceeded to then say, by the way, I can notify you about breaking news as it happens. Would you like to enable these alerts? I thought about it. How exactly would that happen? I would be investing time with my wife and two precious daughters, playing or enjoying a meal and conversation together. Then the Echo device would suddenly butt in, blaring about the latest interest rate increase, stock market tumble, political scandal, or murder. Peace, tranquility, and joy. All gone thanks to this bearer of bad news. Do I want to enable notifications? I thought about it for a fraction of a second. Before it could even finish the suggestion, I was yelling at the device, No! I don't want notifications about breaking news. What do you get notified about? I enjoy technology. I have the full suite of Apple products, iPhone, iPad, Mac, uh, two Macs, a laptop, a desktop, an Apple Watch, Apple TV, all of it. I have Amazon Echoes. I have 802.11ax Wi-Fi. If you don't even know what that is, good for you. Uh, smart thermostat, etc. I have a lot of technology. And I use a lot of the functions and conveniences of these technologies. But there's one feature that I don't use. Notifications. How many of us have our current lives controlled by our notifications? We are engaged in quality work or quality conversation when we feel the familiar buzz in our pocket. The best case scenario is we continue in our work or conversation with our attention split between the other, a colleague, a spouse, or child, what they're saying to us, and the half of our attention wondering what the notification is. The less mature among us may disregard the person right in front of us in favor of checking said notification. What is it this time? A trivial Facebook alert? Someone liked our comment on someone else's trivial Facebook post? A weather alert that a light sprinkle is starting in 10 minutes while you'll be inside for the next 6 hours? A new sports post or killer deal at your favorite online retailer? An email from that business that you've been meaning to unsubscribe from? Or is it something more insidious? Something that could rob you of your joy and send your mood into a tailspin. Breaking news of the latest crisis du jour, something you neither can nor will do anything about. I cannot imagine a worse use of technology than to have a producer or editor across the country dictate what I should be thinking about at any given minute. Why give someone else that kind of power over your life? If you listened for a while, you know I am rapidly against the news. The vast majority of media that considers itself news is, at best, useless drivel that distracts us from what's most important and valuable in our lives. Or, at worst, a direct attempt to manipulate our mindsets and worldviews, to hate our neighbors and coworkers, and stir up dissension and strife. We would all be better off with no news at all. I've been avoiding the news for 10 years now, and and I'm the happiest person I know. Instead of filling my mind with useless or harmful information that I can't or won't do anything about, I concentrate on what I can influence and impact. My family, my church, my community. I would first and foremost challenge you to avoid news altogether. You'll be better off for it. Minimally, consider a four-week news sabbatical. Cut it out completely for four weeks and see how you feel. Election season is a great time to cut it out completely. But minimally, I implore you, no more news notifications. If you won't abstain from all the bad news out there, at least do it on your terms. Find a, a curator of news that you trust. 
not Fox News or CNN or whatever self-imposed brainwashing you normally engage in, but an independent curator of important news, if such a thing exists. Then engage with it only at set times during the month or week. To let someone else decide when you receive your news, not just what you receive, is to abdicate your attention and focus to those who would profit from twisting it. Turn off all notifications. No news app on your phone. No email notifications from news sites. No Amazon Alexa butting into your day to share the latest catastrophe. Why not get notified? Why not be in the know, be up on top of everything that's going on? While there is good reasons to avoid ignoring the news altogether, I'll keep it to finance, as this is a financial podcast. Getting notified about news is a sure way to be alerted every time the stock market tumbles, plummets, dives, plunges, hurls downwards, nosedives, or crashes or any other hyperbolic word they can come up with when the values temporarily dip by 1% or 2%. You will not be subsequently notified when it inevitably rises by that same 1% to 2%. Nor will you ever get this notification. Breaking news! Equity ownership in the best businesses in the world continue to average 10% over the long term, creating wealth for the patient and disciplined equity investor. The disproportionately bad headlines and notifications will lead you, however subconsciously, to believe that investing in stocks is a losing proposition. Never mind the undisputed fact that equities are up more than they are down. Even as I write this at a current low for the year, we are still up 9% from just two years ago, to say nothing of what it will be when it recovers. The news wants you to be afraid. The news wants to generate bad news, and it wants to butt into your life to make sure you know it. I want to share an excerpt from Nick Murray's August issue of his financial advisor uh, newsletter. We share these the client corners, which he includes in that newsletter, which he makes available to for us to share with clients. We share that with all of our retired members. You can get those. I think they're excellent. Uh, but I want to share an expert, an excerpt from what he shares with advisors. And in it, he references the VIX, which is a index that tracks the fear of in the general public of the market of volatility. And so, the higher the VIX means, uh, a higher VIX means people are more afraid of the stock market and what it might do. And a lower VIX means people are not paying attention as much or not as worried about what is happening. So I want to make sure you know what that is before reading. So I want to read this uh, to you and then we'll chat about it. Financial journalism's crisis moment. On July 20, as I'll assume you noticed, the equity market broke out on the upside of a range it had been tracing since the mid-June panic lows. If, in fact, you didn't notice this, If such short-term squiggles simply do not rise to the level of your consciousness, then I say more power to you. When I grow up, I want to be just like you. Financial journalism surely did notice, and it had its crisis response package queued up and ready to go. For you see, even the most fleeting positive trend represents a grave threat to the clickbait catastrophism that joyously rings financial media's digital cash register in a bear market. The modern financial rendering of the eternal truth, if it bleeds, it leads, is the higher the VIX, the higher the clicks. All the way to the bank. Thus, the mortal danger to the financial media business, because that's all it is, is that you will start to relax and feel even a little bit better about what seems to be going on in the markets and even the world. The media cannot allow this, because they know that if and as your financial blood pressure declines to normal levels, you will just naturally stop clicking on every apocalyptic headline they can hallucinate. This will, everything else being equal, tend to make you a marginally better investor. But if it is allowed to continue, it will depress their advertising revenue. You can imagine how that tension resolves itself. 
So even as the breakout strengthened throughout the day on July 20, we were treated to the following obligatory salvos. The current rally will likely fail. Expected S&P 500 to drop below June lows. Fair lead strategies. This is an actual headline from my financial news feed picked up from Seeking Alpha. What's that you say? You've never heard of fair lead strategies? Why? Neither has anyone else. But that's entirely irrelevant. It is an unequivocally bearish headline when media most desperately needed one. For the record, the firm being quoted appears to be one person doing, God help us, short-term technical analysis. For those of you who've been in the investment profession for less than 72 hours, in terms of predictive credibility, technical analysis exists to make voodoo look respectable. Here's another. Why the stock market still hasn't priced in a full recession. This repertorial gem from Yahoo Finance includes, with a perfectly straight face, the sentence, Sentiment is so poor that equity allocations are the lowest since the 2008 financial crisis, and cash levels are at the highest since 9-11. The reporter may or may not be aware that both of these data are screaming buy signals. But the headline writer surely is, which is why he or she has spun the headline negatively. Because it's the headline, not anything as ephemeral as the substance, that draws the clicks. Here's another. Stock market bottom or bounce? What skeptics want to see as the S&P 500 extends gains? This from the financial pornography site MarketWatch. The subhead is, premature to assume bear market is definitely over. As a blinding glimpse of the obvious from, you guessed it, yet another no-name technical analysis. And lastly, the obligatory cherry on top, legendary investor Jeremy Grantham says stocks could plunge another 25% as the super bubble continues to pop. This one appeared on Fortune.com and is a classic of the genre. Faced with an onslaught of unacceptably good news, trot out over the permabear de jour and color him legendary, which is code for, he's a very big name, so you better listen to him. Fortune, you may recall, is the periodical that enshrined Elizabeth Holmes before she was convicted of defrauding investors and sent to jail, and who named Enron as one of America's most innovative companies for six years in a row. Lots of credibility there, don't you think? Be aware that this is just the tasting menu. Media ran any number of similarly empty cautionary items throughout the day. And be assured that the more economic outlook brightens, and or better the equity market does, the more numerous, strident, and silly these warnings will get. Until that golden day, when there isn't a cloud in the sky, and the economy is settling back into its permanent uptrend, and the market is making new highs. That's when financial media will drop its last desperate thermonuclear weapon, the double dip. You think I'm kidding about this, or that it's just my bottomless cauldron of anti-media vitriol boiling over. Au contraire. You are going to read this, I guarantee it. It's just a matter of time. In fact, you're going to read it in both of its manifestations with regard to the economy, the double-dip recession, and in the market, the W-shaped recovery. I can't even tell you what the media will cite as the one and only double-dip recession in history. The blip in 1980, followed by the engineered big one in 1981 to 82. Laugh all you want, this untreated sewage is being warmed up even as we speak. And as far as equities are concerned, media must strain every fiber of their strength to deny the absolutely undeniable megatruth. The best predictor of the trajectory of a market recovery is the trajectory of the previous decline. The W-shaped recovery is a myth. The L-shaped recovery is a species of a sick joke. And if you believe that, you literally believe anything. Once again, for all time, financial media exist for one reason and one reason only, to sell advertising. Their advertising revenues are inextricably linked to clicks, and clicks are an absolute function of the extent to which media can trap readers in a vicious cycle of fear and regret. In one sentence, financial media exists to help investors fail. That's what the media were doing on July 20th. That's what they'll be doing right this minute. That's what they'll always do. I want to reiterate one phrase from that essay. The modern financial rendering of the eternal truth, if it bleeds, it leads, is the higher the VIX, the higher the clicks. 
all the way to the bank. Financial media exists to help you fail as an investor. I share this article even though, and especially because the market did come back down from the July 20th point he references. Why? Because we will see many more catastrophic headlines when the market begins to recover again and all the way through to new equity market highs. This never stops. No matter how the market is doing, good or bad, there will always be financial journalism that will say it's doing bad or that it's about to do bad or that it probably will do bad. And if that is what you're listening to, you will begin to believe it. Because financial journalism must incite fear. It's its job. Do not let their fear-mongering into your life. No more news notifications. As far as my personal notifications go, if you just want something to reference, again, not that I think I'm the pinnacle or anything, but this is just how I do it. I have two apps on my phone that deliver notifications to me. Text messages and phone calls. That's it. I have dozen, dozens of other apps that could notify me, but they're all turned off. Same goes for my computers. No notifications other than text messages. Furthermore, during the day, text messages are suppressed from everyone except my wife. If I open up my phone, I can see that there are text messages on there that I haven't read, but it doesn't alert me when they arrive. I get no buzz, no chime, no nothing. That way it is not constantly stealing my attention. People might think I'm a bad texter, but that doesn't bother me. I choose to invest my time in deep and meaningful work during the day and precious time with my family when I'm home. I choose not to allow others to dictate my time and attention. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's time to make a choice. That's the moral of the story, right? Choose. You have a choice. You can choose to let others control your attention, thoughts, focus, and emotions through notifications. Or you can choose to control them yourself. If you enjoyed that, you would love being part of our free membership community. It's called Retire Membership, and it has a host of benefits all for free. For example, you can always buy my book, 3D Retirement Income, on Amazon. But if you join us at Retire Membership, we will send you either a hard copy or paperback for free, provide the ebook and the audiobook so that you can listen to it if you don't have time to read it. In addition to that, we'll also provide you with a bunch of content that you can't get anywhere else. For example, we have our quarterly retire mentorship magazine, which comes out quarterly and has no ads whatsoever. It's just timely content to help you stay the course. We also have workbooks for our free online workshop to help you get the most out of those, flowcharts to help you make better decisions, and a weekly email to provide timely content that you can unsubscribe from at any time. We never ask for any payment information, and we never share your information with anyone else. We just want to provide timely content and help you stay the course to retire successfully and stay successfully retired. There's no reason to wait, so join us now at retiremembership.com, where you can click in the link in the description, and it'll go right there. We can't wait to see you in the community. Cheers. This podcast is educational only and is not investment, tax, or legal advice.